find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh, check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at SliceOnBroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. Hey guys, welcome to the Indie Mayhem Show number 52, uh, live here from the studios in Pittsburgh, PA, the Mayhem Studios. I'm Mike Sorg, at Sorgachon on the Twitter, video producer here. Uh, a lot of stuff, including indie, uh, indie yeah, International Wrestling Cartel, Renegade Wrestling Alliance shows, and so much more here in the Pittsburgh area. On me with the line, as usual, is Eamon Payton, and his, my battery is running low. <laughs> Hello, Eamon, apparently I got unplugged here. I'll work on that. Oh, no. David, tell people what you do down there in San Antonio, Texas, while I plug your computer back in. Down in, down in San Antonio, Texas, it's sort of the plug-in is that uh, uh, I work for a little company called uh, NWA Inspire Pro Wrestling as a, as a play-by-play commentator. I've uh, been doing that for about a year and a half now. Uh, uh, making my getting my wings, I guess you could say. Is that okay, crazy? okay. This is this is not a job interview. I just generally tell me. <laughs> okay, <laughs> you know, you, he's you a know, great commentator crazy. down there with NWA Inspire Pro, uh, writer of course, NWA Ringside, uh, doing a lot of fun stuff down there. Uh, and this is a show where we, we love talking the indie wrestling. Uh, and uh, you can uh, ch- join us here every week at uh, 11 p.m. Eastern Time, 10 p.m. Central for Eamon, live.sorgatronmedia.com. Join us in the chat, uh, ask questions on the fly, uh, put anime gifts of our guest tonight as we're getting right now. Uh, thank you for that. I can't even see who posted it because it's so tall. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I didn't expect that on this this show. Uh, you can also drop slime this show and other things that we're doing. We talk about not just this. We do talk about uh, the big time wrestling, WWE, TNA, Ring of Honor, and a little bit of New Japan Pro Wrestling these days at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Uh, please check out uh, our, our, our great intro and outro music at BasicSickness.com, another Pittsburgh original. You can also drop us a line with your thoughts about indie wrestling and any other wrestling for that matter at 412-206-WMS0 or the email address at Good times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Join us on Twitter at Mayhem Show, Wrestling Mayhem Show on Facebook, Google Plus, and please subscribe to us on YouTube, iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, uh, High Heart Radio. I know I'm forgetting a bunch of them. Most of those linked over at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. So, Eamon, this is of course the Indie Mayhem Show. We talked to a lot of indie wrestlers, and this is a little bit. Uh, yeah, it's still indie. It's still indie. This is a guy That's tonight. The guy who made his way on uh, on the indies to to. Uh... Uh, move, move on. I guess you could say to, uh, some really <laughs> right. bright stuff. Uh, I would, uh, I would say. Uh, I want to qualify because this guy, it's DJ Z. I know him as many names, and I'm sure I'll call him every other one as I try to get my head around what I call him these days. Of TNA Impact Wrestling, uh, which of course now is, uh, I believe, in the Friday night slot on Destination America. DJ Z, how you doing tonight, sir? I'm doing great, Sword. Thanks for having me on the show. And, and you're, you know, a guy. I, I don't want uh, our, our our show name, Indie May- Mayhem Show, to be, be be defaming to somebody who is definitely on television, uh, is definitely, you know, in prime time, you know, uh, um, you know, on on people's TVs. But you're still very, very involved in indie wrestling. Uh, first of all, um, especially, you know, I, I definitely see you a lot uh, still locally here with the International Wrestling Cartel. Yeah. Uh... TNA, they stopped running house shows in September, so that freed up my schedule a lot to do some independent shows and some international shows as well. But before that, I was barely doing any independent shows throughout 2014. Actually, I don't think I really did any. I did like maybe one or two mm. in like the first half of the year, and then uh, when September came around and there were no, no more TNA shows scheduled, that gave me an opportunity to kind of go back to the indies and... uh you know, do some shows and have a lot of fun. So it's been cool, man. And I'm going to still do some more stuff on the indies here in 2015. Got a couple things scheduled with uh, AAW and AIW. So I'll still be around for a little bit. Nice. Thanks. Now, now, now being somebody that, that that's definitely uh, popped up there uh, on TNA, making an impact up there. I know uh, you're very responsible for uh, our friend from uh, 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 Poughkeepsie, New York, always doing the uh, air horn. Every time I bring up your name, every time I bring up your name, I will point out, thank you for that, by the way. 
<laughs> uh, what's it like dropping uh, dropping down, uh, uh, doing doing the tours on the indies? Like, is it a different vibe? Are you are you more? Uh, 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 are the fans reacting to you differently after after seeing you on the big stage? Yeah, absolutely. I think fans uh, are more familiar with me now, so I can end up in cities and parts of the country and parts of the world that I've never been to before, and the people already know who I am from tv or if they don't have tna on tv they can still see it on youtube and i've noticed that's been a thing when i go to other countries Mm -hmm. i was in st petersburg russia last month a city that i didn't even know existed until uh, i was booked there and the fans all knew who i was and i asked them do you guys get tna on television here they said no they watch it on youtube i got a similar reaction when i was in singapore last year as well so it's just like, it really doesn't matter if you have television or not. It, you can see DJ Z, you can see independent companies, you can see anything on YouTube. So it's really <laughs> great that you can go to other parts of the world and people will still know you. I guess we're kind of going through that a little bit now. We just spent, uh, we had just had Joe Nebraski, as I mentioned to you, uh, uh, on Wrestling Mayhem Show tonight talking Wrestle Kingdom 9. And, and, and now. Um, uh, I think we're the ones going out there and looking for those foreign market guys like that, right? Um, you know, for yeah. Example. So, um, now I, I I did notice you know I, I try to at least you know so we don't cover the same ground so much. At least check out the last time you were on, and, and I was surprised. I, it had been so long, I forgot how many times you were on the show. Uh, you were last on with us uh, on the Wrestling Mayhem show back in two thousand nine. And I thought it was really interesting because back when that happened, I think we were just going into the last show under Norm Connors for the International Wrestling Cartel. And now we're having you on again, and we've just had another change. So so you haven't been on for the entire uh, regime of Chuck Roberts and the International Wrestling Cartel. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and That's I know- funny. I, I didn't know that. I, I, it doesn't feel like it was that long ago, but mm-hmm. yeah, I guess it was. Um, but I, I mean, what, what is that like? Like, like, again, this is, this is a promotion that you grew up with here in Pittsburgh. I think you said on the, on that show, you've been with it, uh, uh, you know, training in some capacity since you were 16 years old. Uh, haven't seen it change hand a couple of times going through so many, uh, uh, changes over the years. Uh, uh, what, what do you think about, uh, the, the, cha- the latest change, uh, in your home promotion? Well, it's a little different with me now. Cause back in the day, I, lived in the Pittsburgh area and I was very much informed about everything that was going on within the company. Cause I was always around the guys, but I haven't lived in that area for like four years now. Mm-hmm. So I've been kind of out of the loop. Like I never really know what's going on anymore. And I catch up with people and the latest happenings when I'm in town, but I think it's going to be really interesting with the newest change they have. Justin Plummer's taking over and he seems to be very passionate and has some big plans and it's cool, but I do think that people are a little curious about how it will go just because he's new to the wrestling business. Whereas Chuck Roberts, people kind of had confidence in, in him from the beginning because Chuck had been involved with the business for years and years prior to taking over. So he kind of already knew the ins and outs of wrestling and he was constantly around the wrestlers and he would hear the gripes that guys had. And uh, he kind of learned the business, you know, just from being around wrestlers constantly. And I think Norm Connors has an influence in helping him as well. So with Justin Plummer, it's a little different because he's, he's in a way like an outsider coming into the, to the role of promoter. But I think he's going to be fine because he's got – like a lot of like uh, passion and, and enthusiasm and he's a good dude. And I think Chuck's kind of going to kind of be helping him and showing him the ropes. So guys don't take advantage of him and he doesn't make some rookie mistakes early on that a lot of other guys tend to make when they first run a wrestling company, but mm-hmm. it'll be interesting to see. Yeah, it's been interesting, and yeah, I've been definitely reassured it's going to be a lot of uh, uh, same people helping them out. So I, I'm looking forward to see what happens there for sure. Um, so, you know, it, kind of going back uh, a little history, uh, but this is something that we kind of generally ask everybody, uh, because in mean, this show, we really want to kind of celebrate indie wrestling uh, kind of in general and the, and the cool stuff, the cool alternative stuff out there. Um, and I think for a lot of people, like even TNA, I think, is, is very much an alternative uh, in a lot of cases to WWE, which you guys are doing over there. 
Um, so what did you get? What first got you into wrestling? Obviously, you know, uh, passionately enough that you've gone as far as you have all over the world. Uh, but what was kind of the first thing that, that kind of, uh, 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 hooked you? You know, I don't have a first thing really. It's just something that's always been with me for as long as I can remember. Mm -hmm. I grew up watching the WWF and WCW like any other American kid did. And, uh, it was just something that I always was interested in. There was never like a moment where I'm like, Oh wow. Wrestling's awesome. And even the moments that people have where, Oh, like what was the moment when you knew it was fake? I never had that moment. So I feel like I always kind of got it. Like I knew that, you know, it wasn't for real, but I was entertained by it. And I was most intrigued by the athleticism and, uh, just the really cool things and the over the top personalities and, uh, larger than life personas that came with wrestling. All that stuff just kind of like was attractive to me from a young age. And uh, I knew I always wanted to be a wrestler. And I feel like if there was one moment where I had an idea of like the type of wrestler I wanted to be, it was when I was like 14. I've told the story like a million times, mm -hmm. but I skipped school one day because somebody gave me a Japanese wrestling tape. And I've always wanted to watch Japanese wrestling and it was a uh, death match tape. I feel like that was oh, wow. the way a lot of kids were exposed initially. Like if you were, if you grew up and you were like a tape trader and like hardcore, like underground wrestling fan, I feel like for a lot of people of that generation, their introduction to Japanese wrestling was some type of death match, whether it was, the IWA King of the Death Matches, which was like a famous, like buzzworthy tape on the underground scene, or uh, Big Japan Death Matches, whatever it was, maybe FMW. That was a lot of people's introduction into that world, and for me, it was no different. I was lent a Bug Zapper Death Match wow. <laughs> videotape <laughs> from Big from Big Japan Pro Wrestling. And that match was the reason I'm a wrestler. <laughs> no, not, not, not even. Uh, on the undercard of that tape was a Lucha Libre Japanese wrestling kind of hybrid tag team match. And that match blew my mind so much that I didn't even make it to the Bug Zapper death match just because I kept rewinding the tape and watching the Japanese Lucha match again and again and again. And that's kind of like where my uh, fascination with that type of wrestling comes from. It's from that tape and just the way I felt watching it and just how out of this world the style was those guys were wrestling. I knew, hey, I know, I've always known that I wanted to be a wrestler, but when I do become a wrestler, I want to blow people's minds the exact same way these guys are blowing my mind right now. And yeah, that's uh, that's where it all started. <laughs> that's awesome. Although now you've got me curious about how a bug zapper match goes, uh, about as much as I think the alligator match I saw jo on a tape Joe Dobrowski had one time. Uh, how does that? Even <laughs> you can probably work? find it on YouTube at this point. I'm He's working on it. On I'm wor I, I was trying to find it while I was going through here. <laughs> I, I was glad to hear it wasn't just Strangle Mania like the rest of us kids that discovered Death Match. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But actually, that was another one, too. I was actually just telling a story this afternoon about how one of the first tapes that I saw was Strangle Mania. So it was no different for me. Yeah, certainly. Uh, talk, talking about uh, going around the world, you know, even last time we had you on, I think you were uh, just had been back from uh, uh, one of your uh, trips to Mexico. Um, it seems uh, kind of the, the joke and conversation uh, at IWC seems to be that every time you come around, uh, you bring somebody from Russia or some other country with you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's like we're just like, where does he get these people? Is there some kind of exchange program going on or something? But they, they, you always have somebody come. Coming through, and there's some uh, there's some addition to the card I can't pronounce. Um, but uh, anyways, but at least I'm not on that part. That's Joe's problem. Um, but uh, uh, of course, you just went over to Russia. Uh, I'm hoping we can talk to Fasad here in the future. His first trip uh, over there. Um, uh, uh, what was that experience? And I know you'd been here there before because you've actually done promos for uh, I think Impact Wrestling, if I recall, from Moscow, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, that was the first time I went to Russia. That was back in February of last year. Mm -hmm. But Russia was cool this time, man. Like, I actually, that was a crazy, like, uh, few weeks that I had. I did three different countries in four weeks. 
I did a show in Japan and then came home, uh, did two weeks in Mexico, came home for three days and then went straight to Russia for a week. So, I mean, we were pretty busy for a minute traveling the world, but Russia was cool. It's a little different because you go to Japan, you go to Mexico, there's uh, a lot of pro wrestling just in their culture. Like you can go to wrestling uh, stores, wrestling schools, oh, wow. uh, wrestling restaurants. There's all these things that are wrestling related in those countries. And then you get to Russia and there's like nothing like that. And it's really cold, <laughs> whereas it was quite the opposite in Mexico and Japan. So I didn't really do much. We went sightseeing one night, and that was cool, but I had a hard time enjoying it because I was so cold. Mm-hmm. I just kind of stayed in my hotel room for, like, most of the nights there. Like, we had a weird schedule because uh, we were, like, jet-lagged, and uh, we were kind of cool with it. <laughs> so we would just sleep all day, wake up, like, in the night, have some dinner slash breakfast in our case, and then go to wherever we needed to go, which, you know, was one night we went sightseeing. So we woke up at like 6 or 7 p.m., went sightseeing, stayed up all night, went to bed at 6 or 7 in the morning. Next night was like the wrestling show. So we slept all day, woke up at like 4 or 5 in the afternoon, went to the wrestling show and worked the show, stayed up all night. And then the next day we slept all day, went to wrestling school and stayed up all night and then went to the airport and we were done. <laughs> so we were just jet lagged the whole time. And when I got back to America, I wasn't even like jet lagged at all. I was just still on American time. So I never really adjusted to uh, the time schedule in Russia, but it was a cool tour. Awesome. Awesome. How, how are the crowds over there in comparison? I, I, I know, I know talking about facade, it sounded like uh, there might be some people that, there were some people that uh, uh, knew Pittsburgh uh, uh, for one thing. <laughs> Yeah, uh, there was there was one fan, a passionate hockey fan, who uh, oh, screamed course. out that Pittsburgh sucked during <laughs> Fudd's match, which I thought was pretty funny. Uh, it was interesting. St. Petersburg. Apparently, this was only the second time that professional wrestling has ever been in that city. The first time was a WWE show years ago, so the crowd was still new to seeing wrestling live and. Generally, I like crowds like that because they're not jaded. They're not spoiled by seeing everything. So you don't have to do much to get them to uh, have a good time and react to uh, the characters and the moves and the matches that they're watching. But it was pretty cool. Moscow is a much more intense crowd. They're they're a lot like a kind of like a I don't know like a really good indie crowd. Whether that's a PWG crowd or something like that. Maybe Mm -hmm. I don't really know. (laughs) I don't really know the Indies like that anymore, but, uh, Moscow was like a really cool, like rabid, uh, fan base. And there was a lot of them too. I think Moscow, there was like, maybe like five or 600 where it was a bit smaller in St. Petersburg, maybe like 300, but they had a good time. And, you know, I'd rather have 300 people there into the show than 600 who just sit on their hands and don't really care. So, you know. Um, quick question also. Um, now I kind of, to talk about sort of the transition also from um, um, indie to the stuff you're doing now with TNA and stuff like that. Um, the adaptation of your, of your character as well, the, the stuff as far as, did you, did you ha- have an idea going in as far as the fact that your character would change up? Obviously there's some similarities, but going the full sort of DJ route, uh, uh, as far as taking you know, and and obviously that character has risen and, and gained a bit of success now uh, uh, in TNA. Um, what's that been like, sort of you know, going through the changes of of your character? I love it personally. You got to think I was doing the hairspray male model character mm-hmm. in TNA for my first couple years, but I had been doing that character for almost 10 years on the independence before that. So I had been doing it forever and I just kind of like was clinging to it because it was all I had. You know, I was familiar with that character. I knew how to play that character and I wasn't sure. And I wasn't even really thinking about some other type of character that I could play and portray as well as I had 
felt that I had done with the hairspray character. But uh, the DJ thing, it was just like so organic and happened uh, at like a perfect time because I really was DJing and I was in that world in my personal life. And I never even thought of bringing it into professional wrestling. And then I showed up at TNA after six months of being away from their shows and I showed up and I had an idea that they were going to change my character. I didn't know any of the details. All I had heard was that they wanted me to bring my DJing stuff with me to the television tapings. So I'm figured, I was like, all right, well, I guess they're going to change my character, but I never knew anything else. I just heard bring your DJ stuff. So I assumed, okay, it looks like I'm getting a new gimmick. I must be a DJ now. And it wasn't until I got to the tapings that they told me, okay, you're going to be the DJ for Robbie E and Jesse Goddard. And from there, like that was all they told me. It was then up to me to bring this character to life and figure out how he was going to look, how he was going to talk, how he was going to portray himself. And it just flowed so quickly and almost like instantly from my mind, the air horn even was like within minutes of them telling me, this is your character. Like my mind just started like turning and I'm like, okay, I could do this. I could do this. I could do this. And within minutes we had the air horn and they loved the idea. They didn't get it at first, but once I explained to them and showed them, they were like, oh, that's good. And uh, me doing the air horn noise with my mouth was also like a happy accident. We were doing a rehearsal of the DJ uh, entrance, I guess, the first time we ever did it. We did a rehearsal like earlier in the day, and they didn't have my computer set up yet. So I just did the air horn noise with my mouth as I was introducing Robbie and Jesse. And everybody were like, was like, you know what? It's almost funnier when you do it with your mouth instead of the actual horn. <laughs> and it just kind of like grew from there. And yeah, it's just like taking on a life of its own. And it's really cool to be doing something new and different than the character I've been playing for years and years. And it's like relevant to pop culture. That's the other thing. Like pro wrestling always ref reflects pop culture and like DJs and electronic music is like a kind of a hip popular relevant thing right now. So it's just the perfect timing for that type of character. And I'm having so much fun with it. Nice. Nice. Awesome. Um, I have to ask, uh, I, I, I came across something that you were on, uh, on TV. And I can't remember the show, but I remember you trying to acquire a human tongue. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> which, which, which watching this thing, I know you're like, I need something to, to, to be intimidating, you know? Uh, how did you come across that experience? Uh, what, was it, what was the show again? Oddities. You've ever seen Oddities. it before? It's on the, it was on the Science Channel. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, it, I had to go seek it out on, on YouTube or something uh, when, when I heard about this. How did you come across something like that? I love that show, man. Like, <laughs> I don't remember exactly when, but a few years ago, a friend told me, hey, you should check the show out. You'd really like it. And it was basically Pawn Stars, but with, yeah. like, really weird uh, stuff. It's from this, like, obscure like, antique shop in New York City where they sell, like, I don't know, just really weird, like, rare uh, items. And uh, I got addicted to that show just because there's so much, like, crazy stuff on there. And I'm kind of into, like, weird, dark, almost, like, morbid things. So it, it grabbed my attention right away. And I'd been watching the show for like a year or so. And finally, I was just like, man, I want to be on that show. Well, first it was more like, I want to go and visit that shop. But then it was more like, well, forget visiting the shop. Like, I want to be on the show. Mm -hmm. At this point, I'd already been on television for like a couple years now. So I'm like, yeah, this might be possible. Like, I got to figure out how to get on this show. And it was as simple as me Googling how to be on oddities and <laughs> took me to their official website on the science channels website. And there was a thing at the bottom that said, like, if you're interested in being on oddities or whatever, send an email and tell us why. 
So I sent an email and I said, you know, hey, I'm a wrestler and uh, I love the show and blah, 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 blah. And it was like 48 hours later, my phone rang and it was the producer of the show. <laughs> and awesome. he was like, yo, we need you on the show. Uh, you're perfect for it. And he asked me if I could be in New York City on some date. I don't remember. It was like the end of January 2013. But unfortunately, I was going to be in England for the TNA UK tour. Mm -hmm. And I told him, I'm like, well, unfortunately, I'm not going to be around. And he was like, you know what? Uh, that's okay. If you can make it to New York the next week, we will like put the production on hold just to get you on the show. Oh, wow. So it was awesome because that episode happened to be the season finale as well. Nice. So they like waited an extra week just to get me on the show to put me on the season finale and they centered the whole episode around me. So it was awesome. Like you couldn't ask for a better experience. Mm -hmm. You get to be on a show that you already love. And then they're going to make you the, the featured, uh, like storyline of the episode. It doesn't get any better than that. So really <laughs> cool experience. I actually went back to the shop, uh, in August when TNA did television there. And, uh, the owner of the shop, his name is Mike. He told me that like he's had a, quite a few people come into the shop and say that they heard about it from the episode that I was on. Nice. So it was pretty cool. He gave me a bunch of free swag for that. So <laughs> hopefully, I helped his business out. Awesome. Maybe we'll see you on Amazing Race in the in, in the future, like some of your uh, 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 colleagues. <laughs> eh, I don't know about that. I mean, I'd love to do more TV stuff, but I don't really see a reality show competition. I don't really think that's me. You have mm -hmm. to have quite an outrageous personality. I feel like, and I don't really think that's me. I have an outrageous personality, but, uh, I don't think it's TV friendly. So, <laughs> uh, whereas like Robbie is like perfect for that type of thing and right. Jesse as well, but I'm, I'm a little different. So I don't think I'd fit in with like a reality competition, but who knows? You never know what's going to happen. Awesome. And of course, as we're talking to you here, I, I know that you just went through a slew of tapings here uh, in New York City. I think it was, what was a, a three-night stand out there. Um, how are things going being back at TNA after, after I know, you know, as we discussed, a several-month hiatus here, uh, debuting on the new network and everything. How are things going out there? It's pretty cool, man. Uh, it was great to see everybody. It's kind of like when you're in school and then like you go for summer vacation and then you don't see anybody for like three, three months. Then you come back and you're <laughs> all excited to see everybody. It's like refreshing and you're catching up. So it was a lot of that throughout mm -hmm. the week with the wrestlers and my friends there. Uh, but the tapings themselves were cool, man. Like the show is pretty sweet. Like the first episode I thought went well and destination America are really cool and uh, enthusiastic and have a lot of uh, faith in TNA. Mm -hmm. And they gave us free hoodies. So nice. it's awesome. They gave us free, free Destination America hoodies that are so comfortable. Like, I think they're made out of the same material that they made the Snuggies out of because it feels like a blanket wrapped on your body. It's just the most comfortable hoodie. Unfortunately, mine didn't fit me, so I gave it to my girlfriend. But so comfortable. <laughs> awesome awesome um yeah it sounds like they're giving them a lot of stuff up there i, I heard i think like the mike tonight shows on like saturday morning out there um so and, and i was amazed i was amazed like, i've never i haven't had cable for several years myself and i never heard of the, the station and i actually visit uh some some relatives out out uh west in california they watch it all the time and they're like yes wrestling's coming like they were very aware of it so it sounds like it's getting a lot of play out there so uh, hopefully it's a good relationship uh for that and I hope there's a lot of growth there for TNA. Um, so yeah, work. man, it's so cool. Like, there's mm -hmm. already like three different TNA shows on the channel. Nice. And I had a friend text me last night saying he was watching like the national championship game, which I'm assuming is some type of football game. Yes. And there was TNA commercials during the game. Wow. Which kind of blew my mind because I'm like, whoa, that's like network television, like serious stuff. And they're running commercials for TNA. It is. It is. That's uh, awesome. It is. So it's like already in just a matter of weeks, like we've got way more exposure than we were having on Spike. So I think it's like the start of something really cool. Nice. Nice. Uh, looking forward to see where, where that goes and see what these other programs are. 
Um, I, we had a question. Uh, I don't know if you remember Wheels from uh, the old IWC shows, uh, but he's got a question. Um, it, it, what's the? Or let me get his wording here. Um, which ring do you prefer, six sided or a four sided? Um, I know you've had a back and four. forth there, TNA. Definitely a four. <laughs> <laughs> four. I am not a fan of the six sided ring. But, you know, I can adjust to whatever the situation is. Sure, sure. Like, I prefer the four, but if TNA wants to go with the six and wants to make that their identity, no big deal. I can adjust to it. But it is definitely strange Yeah. if you've never been in that ring before. There's a lot of differences. Uh, yeah, what 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 does that do to your – I mean, uh, you, you come up training in how many years in a in – a, in a, four-sided ring uh you know does that just kind of mess with your orientation or like tag matches or like what 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 goes into that mentality going into that yeah it's pretty confusing uh i'm not gonna lie it, it can be confusing i remember the first time i did a tag match in that ring there was a, an issue because i didn't know which corner i was supposed to be in <laughs> so i just tried to look for the one that had the rope on it i was like well, what, well whichever one has the tag rope i'm guessing is the corner but it took me a minute to figure that out. I didn't know. And uh, so many differences. Like, we're used to um, at four sides. It's pretty pretty easy. But, like, I'll take a move, and then I'll sell up, and it'll take me a second to figure out where I am, you mm-hmm. know, because I have cameras to worry about. I'm trying to make sure my face is being seen at all times. Right. And when there's those two extra sides, sometimes you get kind of, like, lost in, like, the heat of the moment. You're like, well, wait a minute. Wait, where's the camera? Hang on. So it can it can mess with your head a little bit, mm-hmm. and probably the biggest difference in that ring is the uh, the corners, because the ring is shaped differently. Instead of getting that ninety degrees in the corner that you get with the ropes and the turnbuckle, it's more of an obtuse angle. So you can't stand on the the ropes the same way. Like if I were to climb the ropes to do a four fifty splash it's going to be much more strange for me because I'm used to it just from a 90 degree angle, like rope, Mm -hmm. turnbuckle, rope. But this one, the turnbuckle pad has to be bigger because the uh, shape is different. So the ropes are wider. So I have to like spread my legs like crazy far or just stand with both feet on the giant turnbuckle pad in order to do my move. (laughs) So that's different. Mm-hmm. And actually, I'm I'm more comfortable springboarding in the six sided ring, which is crazy because I've rarely springboarded ever in my career. <laughs> but I feel much more comfortable springboarding in the six sided ring than the than the uh, climbing the corner, just because I just feel awkward standing on that corner like that. Right. Right. Uh, we had a question from the chat. Uh, Matt Carlin's here, our friend in the mainstream. He actually works here at KDKA. Um, he asked, I know that guy. You know that guy. <laughs> uh, he. Uh, oh. oh, yeah, that's right. You did a do, did the thing with him recently. That's right. Um, yeah. He, he Hello, said, Matt. He uh, wants me to ask you about uh, busting up your ankle in Mexico. He says the pics that you were sharing were very upsetting to him. <laughs> yeah. Uh, more bad luck that I have. I put out a a tweet before I went to Mexico where I, I had joked about uh, getting into the usual like trouble and grave danger that I get into every single time that I go to Mexico. Right, right. You talked about that last I time you were weird, on the show. I have a weird... Yeah. What's up? You talked about that last time you were on yeah. the show, that you have some, some bad history yeah, in Mexico. Yeah. yeah, it's weird, man. I, something terrible happens to me every time I go there, yet I keep coming back. I don't know what it is. I, I, I started like doing some like thinking, and I'm like, you know what it is? I think I'm just attracted to things that are really beautiful and slightly dangerous as well. Like, I think that's what it is. Like, I'm just attracted to things and people that are, <laughs> that, are that fit that description. <laughs> but, uh, but anyway, I put out a tweet, like joking about the grave danger I would encounter this time in Mexico, bro. The first day, the first day that I'm there, wow. I nearly break my ankle in a wrestling match. <laughs> And, and this wasn't even like a big one either. Cause like, this was more like my warm up match. Cause I had my triple a match the mm-hmm. next day. So I did like a little indie show the night before just to kind of get, get warmed up. Cause it's, it's different down there. Like the elevation is different. So you get tired more quickly in the ring when you're in Mexico. Yeah. So, uh, and knowing that from, 
previous experiences. I'm like, well, I, I kind of want to get my myself ready for that. So let me do this indie show the night before my, the big show. And of course, I sprained my ankle uh, taking a hurricane rana. And I thought initially that I'd broken my ankle, but then adrenaline was still going. So I was actually okay. And I finished the match. And when I got to the back, I was walking. I'm like, no, I think I'm okay. Like it, it wasn't even swollen. So I wasn't too worried about it. Next morning I wake up and I couldn't walk. Oh, could not stand on it. Could not put weight on it. Then I got worried because, Hey, we've got our big match, 10,000 people and, triple A TV taping and I can't even put weight on my ankle. How am I going to have a amazing match right now? So it was pretty scary. I, uh, I just took some anti-inflammatory pills and wrapped my ankle and taped it like crazy. And then I got a muscle relaxer, uh, from Ricky Marvin on the bus. And I took that. I don't think it was like one of the crazy ones. It wasn't like a Soma. It was just like, you know, it was a muscle relaxer. It's like a normal, like, safe one, I think. <laughs> so I took that, and through some miracle, by the time it was showtime, I felt fine. And I was doing flips and twists like nothing had ever happened. But my ankle was swollen, like, twice its size. But for some reason, it wasn't bothering me as bad. So I was wrestling the rest of the tour with a sprained ankle, but you wouldn't even know it in the ring because I was wrestling as if nothing had happened but still to this day like it's not back to its normal size it's still messed up Jeez. and there's still certain things that give me great difficulty like doing squats is really difficult in the gym i can't run but i can wrestle it's like so weird i don't even understand it but i think we're okay for the most part Awesome, awesome. Well, uh, don't want to keep you hanging here until late here on a Tuesday night, but I want to get that one last question out there. You've been at this for a, a good while, all around the world. Uh, what's the best and the worst thing about doing indie wrestling uh, all these years? I think that the best thing is the friendships that you make with the other wrestlers because you're all like kind of chasing the same dream. You all have similar goals and you all like can relate to each other in that respect. Like it's, and then, you know, when you finally do make it, it's cool to see those friends that you shared those moments with on the Indies to see them doing big things, whether that's WWE, TNA, Japan, whatever. It's cool. It's cool to like, you know, come up from the beginning with these guys and build friendships. And then you all like, kind of succeed like it's cool to see that and i've got friends that i've made on the indies that i think i'm gonna have for the rest of my life and it's just like really cool you know because i feel like once you're out of high school and out of college it's really hard to meet people and build like long-lasting friendships the way that you did in school and thanks to my time on the independence and even still at tna like I think I've made friends that I'll probably like stay in contact with forever. So that's probably the best thing for me personally. The worst thing I would say about the independence, uh, there's a couple things. I mean, there's a couple things. One, in my opinion, is I find the egos of independent wrestlers to be uh, much greater than that of the egos that I've encountered at TNA or Japan or Mexico. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a little interesting. I don't know what it is, um, why that's the case, but guys on the independents can often be quite delusional, delusional about their in-ring skills, delusional about their self-worth. And that kind of annoys me at times just because I'm such a humble guy. And I just see these guys talk their shit. And I'm like, bro, like, you're an independent wrestler. Like you have not done anything yet or gone anywhere to have this inflated sense of self self worth. So I think that's something that's wrong. And it seems to be like a common thing, like not just in one area, it's all over the, the Indies. So that's like part that kind of sucks because it's like, man, if you already got an ego now, it's like, who's going to like vouch for you later if, because I, I mean, I think a big reason why I've gotten as far as I've gotten is just my attitude and 
how humble I've always been. Like people like uh, helped me out, and that was a big reason why. But uh, that that part like kind of sucks. Uh, and I would say another part is there's a lack of mentors on the independence. Mm-hmm. Uh, I went years, like starting out in the Indies, maybe like three years. And I started thinking that like, you know, you know what, man, I'm getting pretty good at this independent wrestling stuff. It took me one match with a guy who used to be in WWE to make me realize that I didn't know anything. And it was like this like crazy moment for me where I'm like, you mean to tell me I've gone three years thinking that I was really getting the hang of this and it took me one match to realize I didn't know anything and that I have learned so much more in this one match than I did in these last three years. It kind of like pissed me off and made me really angry, but that's just the way it is on the Indies. Like who's going to teach you? Like you can only learn so much from people who have only wrestled on the Indies. Mm-hmm. Like that's their only experience and wrestling on television is a totally different animal than wrestling on the independence. So if you're learning from guys that have only wrestled on the Indies, like sure, they can teach you like some stuff. Like they've had experiences, obviously they can teach you how to do basic moves, but there's still a lot that you will have to learn, you know, after the fact. And it took me years and years to, uh, kind of realize that. But I think that's a problem is like, there's no mentors. <laughs> so you'll get indie shows where guys in the first match are wrestling like it's, you know, the main event of WrestleMania. And then when you wonder why your crowds burn out and tired by the time your main event goes on, well, that's why it's because they've already seen like all the craziest moves, like since the first match, what's left to do, you know, mm-hmm. there's just a lot of uh, problems like that. And it's nobody's fault. It's not the fault of the guys in the first match doing the, all the crazy moves. That's not their fault. They don't know that, you know, you should work your spot on the card. They don't know that because there's nobody that can tell them that because there's nobody that's like been to that level of wrestling that can pass down that knowledge. So I think that's something that the Indies desperately needs is just more guys who have like been to a higher level that can kind of like teach the younger generation and kind of help them out and, and, you know, uh, it'll make the shows better. It'll definitely, like, uh, save some guys' bodies from potential injury. <laughs> mm-hmm. And uh, that's why I always, when I go back to Pittsburgh, when I go to any indie show, like, I try to help out wherever I can and, like, pass down any knowledge that I've learned from some great minds in wrestling. Just because if I tell people, then maybe they won't have to go years and years like I did without knowing these things. <laughs> so if I can help somebody out and get them to become a better wrestler in a shorter amount of time, then it's a good thing because that means the Indies will continue to grow and prosper and they'll still be thriving for years and years to come. But, you know, that's, uh, that's just my two cents. Awesome. DJ Z, Zima Ion, former Shima Zion, as I've known him. Still, you're still Shima. Anytime we're in conversation. <laughs> Yeah, one of the guys, you mentioned about the guys coming up, uh, you, of course, Logan Shulo down in NXT, a uh, bunch of other guys uh, we see come through. Uh, as fans, it's great to see you guys on the main stage, getting your opportunity, kicking ass up there. Um, you're our guys. You're our local guys, and it's, it's good to see. It's awesome. And especially as, as, as uh, uh, friends of the show, it's even more special for us here uh, on the Wrestling Mayhem Show uh, series here. So thanks. Uh, tell people if they want to find out more about you, where can they find more about DJZ? Uh, first of all, I'd like to apologize for being so long-winded. I drank two Red Bulls, so if I <laughs> talk a lot, fine. that's why. That's fine. It's but, uh, <laughs> second of all, uh, you can find links to all of my social media on my new official website, Ooh. realmichaelparis.com. It's got my Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and my SoundCloud. So, yeah, check out realmichaelparis.com for all your DJZ info. That's right. That DJ stuff is for real. It's not just a clever gimmick in wrestling. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, awesome. Uh, great to see you doing good. Check them out. And, of course, uh, we're going to continue with a little bit of indie wrestling talk with Eamon. Of course, DJ Zima, 
the former Shima Zion. Uh, also, uh, y- you can you can find more stuff that he's done, especially in the recent months over at PittsburghWrestling.com, our little thing over there. We got a lot of stuff going on, uh, including uh, IWC's uh, Winner Takes All 2014, including uh, Jeff Hart, or, I'm sorry, Matt Hardy. <laughs> That's the other TNA guy. Uh, Matt Hardy on that show against friend of the show, John McChesney. Uh, so much more. And uh, you know, say DJ Zima taking on Sammy Guevara, who I know, uh, Eamon, you're very familiar with down in the Texas area. Did some great stuff in the past there with the NWA Inspire Pro and other stuff. Um, but go check it out. Hey, matches as low as 99 cents. Uh, it's $1.99 for the last show and, and other stuff for IWC. And other great stuff, including Renegade Wrestling Alliance, Vicious Outcast Wrestling. Uh, I mean, stuff. Uh, just this past month, I put out an email today uh, for guys that signed up to the newsletter. You can still sign up for the newsletter in the uh, 100th episode, 100th, sorry, show of IWC is actually free if you sign up at, at uh, pittsburghwrestling.com there on the side for the newsletter. You'll get updates on DVDs and our podcasts. Uh, yeah, we don't we don't put out too much. We just we'll let you know. We'll let you know there's stuff going on. You know, we're not going to flood your inbox, hopefully. Um, but go check that out. DVDs, digital downloads, all available there. Uh, the, the email I put out today, I mean, it had names like Matt Hardy, like Sanjay Dutt, the current Cruiserweight champion with the RWA, and uh, Tomosa Champa. Tomoso Champa? Tomoso Champa. Champa. I, I, I'm sorry. No, I was, Every no, time I had, look at his name, there's way too many damn letters. But he's freaking you had awesome. You the Champa part, right? I got the Champa. 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 I haven't been keeping up on my Ring of Honor as much as I, I, every time I go to the show. Whenever they come to town, every time, without question, I don't care. But and I say I'm going to watch the show, and I don't watch the show. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, I, but I love it though. They're, they're great stuff. You should check out Ring of Honor if you have the time. I don't have any time. There's too much wrestling. It's too much. Too much when do we get this point where there's too much wrestling? Oh, brother. Support oh, the indies. Brother, brother, Support brother. the indies. PittsburghWrestling.com. US. Uh, IndieWrestling.us uh, as well. For all that stuff. All that stuff. Uh, so we have. Uh, speaking of uh, speaking of support the indies. Jeez. Jeez. We do want to we do want to uh, bring up the fact that since the, it will be this uh, coming Monday, uh, uh, that the the uh, hashtag raw alternative uh, raw I it's it's really raw alternative. <laughs> so basically, you 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 take out the. They got the A in alternative and put it in, in raw. It was originally hashtag boycott raw, which is a much easier hashtag, but then people got mad about but it. More so negative. Whatever. It's definitely a more negative one, right? So yeah, yeah, I, I'm with right. them on that. I think it's, I, I, I think it's I, a good decision. Yeah, I, I, it was more of taking that hashtag when it was used as like, because it used to be, it was you, the hashtag used to be like for people like going to WWE events and like, you know, prepare for what to chant or whatever. And, and, but you know, yeah. Uh, but no, this is a event that is being put together by Beyond Wrestling, uh, the good folks over there. Uh, uh, tomorrow night, or uh, tomorrow night? What am I saying? Uh, Monday <laughs> night, Monday, January nineteenth, yes. uh, uh, during the hours of Monday Night Raw, uh, and during that time, uh, twelve independent wrestling organizations will be showing their best matches of uh, two thousand fourteen uh, to raise awareness for the independents and uh, give people an alternative to. Uh, the stuff they uh, clearly aren't liking on Monday night. So yeah, that's great. Um, that's great. I, I think it's, I think this is really fun. This is a really good uh, uh, concept. It's amazing. I, I I mentioned something to a local promoter. I was like, "Hey, this thing's happening." He's like, "How do we get in on it?" Um, yeah, <laughs> it's a great you know. So so definitely. And I don't have an answer to that question, honestly. I, I don't know who to t- talk to or anything like that. Um, but I, I kind of pushed them, like, go, go, go investigate this. You, you should. Um, and <laughs> any promoter, please, please. I, I think you, I don't know if there's any room on this thing or if they're doing more than one of these. I know that uh, I, I heard I, from they, uh, Drew Cordero that there's been multiple other companies that have offered that love the idea and that want to work with tremendous. them for a uh, so for it, a second one. So. It looks like um, um, they were live streaming. Uh, I think it was a test stream they were doing this past Monday. I tuned in. There was a great johnny gargano match going on uh at, mm-hmm. at the time i think it's great even just like even if you're still watching raw throw this one on the side go support it tell yeah. people around it and check it out yeah you don't <laughs> it, you definitely don't have to not watch raw to be a part of this like this this is a thing if you want to sure i mean absolutely uh but the basically the only way you you can fail at this is if you make a make it a point to not watch raw but don't watch the stream 
Yes, exactly. That, that's the only way you can fail at this. Raw's not going away. They don't care about your eyeballs. Obviously, no, 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 no. if you've watched it lately. Um, and then you also listen to this show. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, no, go do it. it, it, it seriously, it, it, check it out. There's nothing to lose there. Um, uh, I, I, I'm going to. Remind me Monday, so I don't forget, though. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not good with that. I need some help with that. Uh, just like I forget the watch Ring of Honor. Um, but uh, no, it's awesome. And, and you'll hear this guy's voice because NWA Inspire Pro is a part of it. Uh, yep. So that's going to be cool. We're, it's going to be real cool. We're providing a pretty awesome match that I, I, I'm very happy to, to give to the the whole wrestling world, which is the uh, uh, Dirty and Ido Takaki Watanabe match from uh, our April events nice. uh, from this past year. So that's going to it's gonna be a really fun one. And the match listings for the other promotions, wow. too. Are yeah, it, I'm really looking at good. this. Uh, a few favorites on here. Uh, Chris Hero versus uh, Colin Delaney from 2CW. I think they're up at Buffalo. Johnny Gargano mm-hmm. versus Ethan Page and AIW out of Cleveland. Um, uh, the Young Bucks against the Super Smash Brothers in uh, Smash Wrestling in Canada. Nice. nice. Um, uh, I know uh, uh, AAW just uh, announced uh, it's uh, Eddie Kingston against Keith Walker. Mm-hmm. Uh, from a couple months ago, which I hear was phenomenal. Nice. Uh, if you love the big guys, you know, beating the crap out of each other. Um, so there, there's some really cool stuff on it. Inner species wrestling. Who, who, uh, who, who has, were in the booth right next to us at Wrestle WrestleCon that uh, uh, <coughs> whatever that was that we went. Um, really <laughs> cool people there, including Pinky Sanchez. Um, so yeah, real real cool, real cool to see this this kind of coming together. So, guys, I I love the that the wrestling industry is smarting up the social media in such a big way between mm-hmm. this. Uh, I'm seeing hashtags everywhere on shows. Um, there's just smart people that understand this getting involved, you know? Yeah. Um, and I think you're going to see more and more of that uh, people that want to leverage this and have figured it out. Uh, the, 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 the new regime is here. The younger regime of promoters and advertisers are here and they're figuring it out and they're pushing it. Um, uh, it's fantastic. Uh, it, it's 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 a good time. As we keep saying, it, it, on on the mainstream, on the midstream, on the low stream, it's a good time to be a wrestling fan. Um, yep. Speaking of being wrestling fans, we have a convert. Can we can we officially announce this? <laughs> yes, um, we, I think yes, you also re- maybe received a personal message on this. Uh, we talked about uh, uh, once again. Uh, we we had Joe DeBrathy finally back on Wrestling Mayhem Show earlier tonight. So check that out, Wrestling Mayhem Show two fifty two. Um, and we just had the kind of the everybody got a chance to check out Wrestle Kingdom nine uh, uh, amongst the crew that that was going to. Uh, so we we just kind of. Got everybody's thoughts on it here. Uh, New Japan Pro Wrestling's big uh, kind of U.S. feature. Um, and, and they're not done. Apparently, the uh, ASX Network, which used to be HDNet, is going to get a 13-episode run of a, of a uh, New Japan Pro Wrestling show. English uh, announcers to it, or actually MMA announcer and, and, and former U.S. UFC uh, champion. Um, it's going to be classic matches, from what I understand, but you're going to get a lot out of it. Um, but this one, Dear Indie Mayhem, specifically Eamon, I am sorry for every bad thing I have ever said about non-WWE wrestling. I will make an effort to watch more. Your friend, Chachi. Now, now Chachi's my best friend since high school. Uh, Eamon, you've become very knowing of him and his ways and his (laughs) thoughts on on indie wrestling. He would often, often put us down. Even though he shoots it, ringside. One of the main, main reasons we transitioned from having it just at the second yes. on the show it, to being an actual show. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> um, he would often boo us when we started doing the Indie Man Minute. <laughs> so, uh, but uh, he watched New Japan Pro Wrestling and put it in their email in that we read over on Wrestling Mayhem Show. And his messages while he was watching it to me were tremendous. He's also the guy that religiously does watch NXT uh, the morning after um and uh and enjoys it so thoroughly so very thoroughly and barely can even try watching raw it seems um and uh he's become a convert he's 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 found the alternatives he's found the religion amen (laughs) start preaching this stuff right yes definitely tell me the ways amen tell me the ways of the independent professional wrestling (laughs) oh man uh, but no, I, I, I'm happy. I'm happy. At some point, we're going to start doing the show and that that kind of thing. You need to work on your preacher voice with me. Oh, God. that could be our promo for the YouTube. Oh God, I, I, I... Amen. Ooh, tell me, uh... tell me what the word is. Tell me the good news. What is so the good like, news? So it's kind of like a more. It's kind of like a more excited Dusty Rhodes. 
<laughs> that's what that's what I'm getting. Have you never like, been to? A, I, I, I'm going to tell you, ask happy. you a personal question. Have you never been to a Black Baptist church? Because I have, sir. I have not, but I I I am excited now. <laughs> Based you live in your, Texas. Uh, there gotta be some of that around there. You have great. Oh, there is. Am I get in the wrong region. Getting... I'm still confused. I've only flown across the United States. I didn't visit all the in betweens. Um, but. <laughs> Anyways, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But uh but no, I, I I don't know. It's great to see Chachi coming around on this. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. So Pro Wrestling coming up this weekend. Uh myself and the Sorgatron Media crew is gonna be at RWA Pro Wow Bro, RWA Pro Wrestling, <laughs> Renegade Wrestling Alliance. It's our anniversary. They've been around a long, long time and I can't remember how many years. Um so, what was it, seventh year, sixth, seventh year, something like mm. that. They've been around a while. Uh, so good to see them. They were a fledgling promotion. I think some still consider them a fledgling promotion, but they've they've had a really big year. Uh, you know, again, Matt Hardy was there. Sanjay Dutt, um, um, you know, uh, very involved with them right now. Uh, and uh, big shows. They're 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 again taking chances, and I can't wait to see what uh, this new year. Uh, it's going to hold for them. Uh, Sanjay Dutt, Mickey Knuckles teaming up against uh, Jesse Bell and Shane Andrews. I know uh, big tag t- uh, match, uh, um, um, including uh, Ryan Mitchell's uh, father involved in that. And uh, Ryan Edmonds' father, uh, both guys that we've had on um, not this show, Wrestling Mayhem show in the past, uh, interviewed. Um, so it's going to be fun. Uh, always, uh, you never know what to expect from the Renegade, Renegade Wrestling Alliance down in West Newton, PA. So uh, please check it out. And uh, DVDs will be coming up here uh, from Sorgatron Media uh, around the corner, as usual. Very, very quick. As quick as we can turn around uh, for those, of course. Uh, anything else? Anything else that's significant? I think it's been kind of quiet for the most part. Uh, for- it's, been, it's been very quiet uh, uh, as far as events go, uh, I would say. Uh, the only thing I would say is probably what we say as always: is go check out any wrestling events in your area because you know those are the guys you should be supporting with your dollar because they need it. Exactly, exactly. Those are the guys, and tell them to go go talk to a former WWE wrestler as we discussed <laughs> here. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, another uh, sorry, local for us. Uh, they got uh, TV. You can check out footage from these guys online uh pwxtv.com they're having a future show which i think is their it, it sounds like uh best young lions come to pittsburgh to show what the future holds uh, i always like these um and I actually know a couple of names on here joey vengeance a, a part of this i'm recognizing on the poster uh another guy i cannot remember his name i know he wrestles with matt justice in ohio uh, but we saw him at the dbi last year um, but they're in McKeesport, pwxtv.com to see what they're doing. Uh, another one that, I mean, they have their own place that is, they, I think all they do there is wrestling and they have like the, it's, it's built like their girders around the ring are permanent wood, uh, barriers, you know, uh, like that's it, you know, uh, it's, it's, it's really cool to see that and, uh, see them still going up. PWX has been around for a long time. Uh, Pro Wrestling Express here. Here they were an NWA East affiliate for a short time, so uh, go check that out. PWXTV.com, the other one running in the area. So uh, that's it, Eamon. But we packed a lot in there. No, we got. Yeah, no, it was a great time, especially great talks with uh, DJ Zima Ion. Thank you, uh, DJ Z, for joining us. Check him out. Like I said, real pe- Michael Paris dot com. Uh, there's DJing and wrestling going on. Uh, got a lot of stuff going on. And, and support him. Go support, go to ProWrestlingTees.com slash WMS. Pick up one of our shirts. Pick up one of his shirts, too. Both of us are on there. Um, support the guys in indie wrestling. So, uh, until next week. We're indie wrestling. Never said I was a gangster or thug, but I'm an animal. Eating for the taste of the food. Sick, sick, sick. You know how I act now. If you got a problem, come and see if I'm a back down. Joe is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. Hi, everyone. Do you like video games? Do you like reading about video games? Do you like listening to podcasts about video games? Why don't you check out insertcointobegin.com? New articles going up daily, and you can check out our podcast, Boss Battle, on sorgatronmedia.com. <laughs>